Yo, what's up everybody? It's yours truly, Mr. Lang and Poncho. Today, I'm gonna upload the shortest YouTube video on my channel in history, and uh, we'll see where this goes. Thanks. So, hey, 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 I always like enjoying sharing little systems or little things we're doing within our business. Whoops. Oh good, I only have 10% battery, so I have to keep this quick. Um, so hey, this is something we're trying out. It's not tried and true. It's not proven. Well, some of it is. It's just, I guess this chart, this board we're I'm about to talk about real quick is not tried and true or proven. But nonetheless, I do something somewhat similar for like payroll and day-to-day -day stuff, but I'm putting it on the board to kind of, whatever, kind of give us a vision board or everybody can see everything in real time and there's no confusion. So anyway, whoop, a dog sees a coyote. There's a lot of coyotes out here. Freaks out when he sees coyotes. Anyway, I have to make this really quick. Um, and I'm excited to give her a go. Tomorrow we're gonna work. It's a super like rainy day. So it's very, very light. Uh, and it's, it's supposed to be such bad weather. I don't even know if we're gonna make this happen, but basically what well, the only thing on the calendar for tomorrow is repeat clients. And uh, for these repeat clients, I kind of, in a way, grandfathered the, them in at the price that they had paid in the past. Uh, I mean, actually, everyone on here, we've serviced at least at least twice. Some of them three, maybe four? No. Yeah. Anyway, um, so basically we have the day. Oh, what I was saying is nowadays we have a minimum of 225 for most of our services. Christmas lights is a thousand. Um, so basically I have 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Just kind of wrote down here, pretty evenly spaced. And then I, you know, the plan is at least every day I can uh, jot this down because every day I stop in at the shop nonetheless. I'm not necessarily here all day every day, but I come here and do something. Um, but I want to have the, the day scheduled so they know what's going on, where they're going, when they can kind of expect to get out. Um, so, and then, so basically each item is, or everything, basically every task, um, I already got the vehicle ready for them. Every task and how long each task should take. Each job should take less than an hour. So you'll see the less than symbol. Uh, basically they'll get here and leave the shop right away. They don't have to load anything. Uh, optional, since, since they're working less what, six hours, five hours? They're working five hours. I don't owe them a lunch legally. I don't have to give them a lunch. But if they want to grab lunch on their way back, they're more than welcome because we're going to have a shop meeting. Um, that should take less than an hour. Typically, we do our meetings first thing in the morning, but since the weather's so bad, I told them, go ahead and take off, and we'll do the meeting afterwards uh, so that you guys can make the most out of the small window where the weather is supposed to not be super bad. Uh, they should, we should be clocking out no later than 2 p.m. If you come over here, this is what I think is really cool. So this will be, again, tweaked daily. Um, so basically, if you look to our, this is in regards to our schedule to the left, uh, scheduled hours to stay on track is five hours. So these are like our goal thing, you know, kind of our goals in a way. Uh, scheduled hours is five hours. And then in the blue, end of the day performance. At the end of the day, they'll come over here. Were you over, under, or exact? Actual hours clocked in, and they'll write that in. So tomorrow's revenue is only 425 bucks. Like I said, these are just some jobs we've just been wanting to get out of the way. Um, were all jobs completed? Yes or no? Actual revenue earned. So I put that there in case we add jobs throughout the day or in case a job isn't completed for whatever reason. So maybe that the scheduled revenue might change, you know, compared to the actual end of the day. Uh, scheduled commission for the van is only 85 bucks. So not a good day. It's not a good day at all tomorrow. I made it clear with them. This is just a day that we're going to have a meeting. You know, it's, we might do some things at the shop or whatever, but... This isn't like a awesome revenue producing day. Um, so they only can earn 85 bucks because 20% of 425 is 85 bucks. And then the next question is, was this solo or are we gonna split it? Was there two guys on the vehicle? So splitting it, we're at 
forty-two dollars fifty cents. Uh, we're at five hours. Their base pay is set at ten bucks an hour, so they're actually going to make more hourly if they work all the way up till two p.m. Which I hope they don't. They should be getting off sooner than that. I'd like to see them off by twelve. Um, scheduled commission for the truck zero and a because no one's going to use the truck tomorrow because it's still kind of torn up at the moment because i'm doing a little re-plumbing and uh stuff like that so here's our cool little chart they fill this at that this out at the end of the day um hourly pay so basically however many hours they were clocked in they'll multiply it by their base pay which is ten dollars and they'll jot it in and then they'll do the total revenue minus 20 you know and do the 20 percent and jot that in and then they'll know day by day did they make more hourly or did they make more on commission? You know, and they can do that day by day. And then at the end of the week, what are you getting paid? Is it going to be your hourly pay or your weekly pay? Um, whoops. Get out of here, Pancho. So, you know, I'll be honest. We haven't, they've been having a hard time getting the commission because uh, we've had a lot to do either at the shop, um, a lot of green guys basically everyone's worked here less than three months and it's just been tough but everyone sees you know ev everyone has made commission and uh that's what it comes down to so they see the potential and they see the possibility and that's all that matters so um over here we got our base pay 10 bucks an hour that's for technician and training and it's also the safety net for every for all the other technicians who make less than ten dollars an hour on commission so once you're once you're labeled a technician you have the ability to earn 20 percent of your revenue uh commercial jobs might have separate expenses like lifts and yada yada that would actually be factored out of the jobs total like i can't pay you 20 percent commission on a lift rental you know uh 20 percent is divided evenly between tax unless there's a job split form committed uh submitted so they have like a form where they can custom split like maybe one guy only did a little task he swung by real quick to help with something but then he left or whatever uh if it's not submitted if that form is not submitted it's just split evenly between the amount of techs that were on that job um if a technician is training a new guy it's still the commission, it's still that commission rate, except if, God forbid, this guy is really holding him back, his base pay is at least 15 an hour. You know, I'm not gonna give him a $10 an hour base pay. Um, he'll get 15 an hour if he can't reach his commission because I feel like that's not fair. Maybe he would have reached his commission, but he's taking time out of his day to train this new guy. Uh, and here's sales real quick. 15% of the accepted estimate. Uh, commercial jobs often have expense, expenses, which we do not pay on. Lifts, water, yada, yada. Uh, estimate has to be documented using company cam in order to receive commission. No lazy sales guys. No guys using Google Earth and Street View and, and Realtor apps. you got to go to that estimate, possibly shake that client's hand, take photos of the place, document it. And, uh, and then, and only then, you will be compensated for your uh, sale. Um, so, we've been transitioning to only accepting credit cards. It's cool. It's, it's the right move, right? Because just with our little team here, we still managed to mess up getting these checks to the actual bank, right? Um, whether it's me, whether it's whatever, we still mess up. It's still an extra step. And I just, I, we, we went straight to credit cards. So they put the checks in this box. Every day I come by, take the checks, deposit them. Things still get messed up. Things get lost. Um, about two months ago, I washed a check in my pants, and then literally two weeks ago, we did a job for my aunt, for a family, close family member. I told her not to pay. I was gonna take care of it, uh, but I put the the invo I put the job valued at two twenty five, and my technician accidentally went to collect, and she wrote the check for two twenty five, 
And I told her, hey, my bad. I forgot to tell him that I covered that. He wasn't supposed to collect, but thanks for giving me the check. I'm gonna make sure I give this back to you. Put it in my pocket. But the problem is when I put it in my pocket, I put it in my pocket along with another two checks from that day. And uh, again, washed them. <laughs> Gotta start checking my pockets. But usually everyone's cool about it. But the honest, the honest truth is there's a high probability where we marked an invoice paid, received a check, and that check never made it to the bank due to my unorganization skills, you know? And I've uh, tried things and I've, I've, done, I've done personally what I think I can, you know, maybe there is an easier way, but uh, personally it's something I'm bad at. So we wanna go to credit cards. I feel like it's safer and it's smoother and it's easier for everyone. And we have a card on file is what we're going for. Um, Anyway, why did I start talking about this? Oh, so for the sales, so we went to credit cards. We want to have those cards on file. Um, and basically, if they don't want to do it, we don't do business with them. It's as simple as that. You know, that's how we do it. You got to get it. You got to put a card on file. Um, and we also are seeking 25% deposit. It's either going to be 20 or 25 percent deposit we are seeking a deposit and the reason for that is what you saw just up there our sales guy hope you know when we have like a real sales team out there crushing it every single day but our, um, when you're doing sales or estimates you get 15 percent of the revenue for that job so that's why i want to put that deposit in place i really want to do like 25 percent because to, so basically to schedule you need to pay your deposit once that deposit's paid then I can pay the techs or pay the sales people, sales guys. So then as soon as we get word that estimate is accepted and that non-refundable 25% deposit is paid, I can pay the sales guys for that job. Regardless if that regardless of if that job is a month down the road, you know? But if you're not accepting a, a deposit, how are you gonna pay your sales guys 15% of the revenue if you're not accepting a deposit, you're going to take that risk, pull it out of your pocket, say, Ooh, I hope this job comes through. And then God forbid they cancel and you just paid and you shouldn't have. And trust me, I tried it and it got real messy real quick. I lost some good money on that, but Hey man, all mistakes aren't the end of the world. You got to learn from them. And, uh, I hope, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sick of learning the hard way is what I'm getting at. Hopefully we can have a good 2021. But the fact of the matter is, boys, for Wally's, the end of the year is here. The end of the year is near. And uh, we definitely don't have enough money put aside in the bank, especially with this shop. I mean, with my place and the shop together, that's over three grand a month. And we're not going to, I mean, rev, we're done bringing revenue in damn near. We'll get lucky to bring revenue in through December. Uh, but, well, let's say we're going to at least have three months with hardly any revenue coming through. So there's actually some big plans coming through for Team Wash Life. Basically, like my equipment here, my water-fed pole, and some of the other stuff where it's working really, really well for me. And I'd feel really, I feel really good about it. And I know it's really cool setup um i want to start trying to help guys out by hooking by putting together stuff like this because it is really cool and it's really simple and uh I, drop a comment if you're interested in that i i know a lot of people are because i've had at least five to ten phone calls of guys wanting to come down to my shop or come down and meet me and pay me for the day so I can help them set that up, them set, help them set it up in the back of their truck. And uh, it got my brain thinking. I was like, man, how can I simplify that for them? Because it is a simple setup. They're just nervous about taking that leap. So um, if I can get you some instructions and get you like a kit put together, right? Of all the parts and fittings and all you do is tape threads and screw things together, follow the instructions, it's a cakewalk, you know? Uh, it would be easier than putting together an Ikea nightstand, I'll tell you that much. All right, I got to get out of here. My kiddos are damn near falling asleep, and they've been 
wanting to daddy. So, got to get home to the family. But, um, man, hope everyone has a good Thanksgiving. It's uh, Wednesday tomorrow for us, and it's like 7.30 at night for me right now. So hopefully I get this video up by then. But Thanksgiving 2020. 2020, man, what a year. Tell you what. Hey, shouts out to you for making it. And shouts out to you for making it to the point where you can still afford your internet bill and watch YouTube. Specifically, my video. Cheers.